Hey, it's Rick Kettner here. Let's explore three valuable insights from Building a Story Brand by Donald Miller. This book is all about how to clarify your message so customers will listen. It uses the Story Brand seven-part framework, which ties in the universal elements of storytelling to improve brand communication. So it can transform the way that you talk about who you are, what you do, and how you can help customers. So if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a founder, if you're in marketing, if you're in any other position where you need to become proficient about communicating what it is that you do as a business or brand, then I highly recommend that you pick up a copy of this book. There are many great books out there on brand communication. This one in particular is one of my favorites because it has such a simple and approachable framework. So with that in mind, let's explore three of my favorite insights from the book, starting with insight number one. Use story to clarify your message. A very common mistake in business is just assuming that people understand what you do and how you could potentially provide value for them. And often, I think this stems from the fact that working in our business day after day, we understand our products, we understand our services, we understand the impact they can have for customers, but sometimes we can fall into the trap of just blindly assuming that everybody else is as familiar with what we do and how we can help. And so a big part of the core message behind this book is that you really need to clarify your message to make sure that customers really get it. And at the center of how this is accomplished with the book is using the power of story. And so the book relies on the seven-part story brand framework. And the idea here is we're gonna use a very common framework that people all around the world fundamentally understand whether they've seen Hollywood movies, whether they have grew up hearing stories from their parents, whether they've read fiction books. This framework is a very, very common formula when it comes to transmitting stories. And so by using this framework, we can use a well-worn path in the human mind when it comes to communicating our message so that it's very digestible, so people can immediately understand and get what it is that we're trying to communicate. And so the book uses this formula and it explains how you can translate the common, let's say, Hollywood approach to this formula into a method of communication for your business. And so the standard Hollywood version of this seven-part framework is something like this. A character who wants something encounters a problem before they can get it. At the peak of their despair, a guide steps into their lives, gives them a plan, and calls them to take action. That action helps them avoid failure and it ends in success. So there's seven keywords there I tried to accent for you, but I'll quickly recap them here. Includes character, number one, problem, the problem that the character is facing, guide, who they turn to to help them, plan, the plan that is provided by the guide so they can overcome their problem, Action, obviously the customer needs to take some kind of action, and then the scenario that might represent possible failure on the one hand, or success on the other hand. Now, if you go through Hollywood movies, you're gonna see this formula all over the place. Star Wars is a good example, The Hunger Games, The King's Speech, many, many movies, books, and even perhaps today Netflix TV shows follow this kind of formula, and so, as I mentioned earlier, a very well-worn path in the human mind as far as how we take in information. We're very familiar with this approach. And so translating this to something that you can think about for your business, we take the exact same seven parts, but we translate it into how you look at your business and how you communicate the value of your business. So for example, the book covers exercises that can help you identify what your customer wants, define the problem they are facing, Position your brand as the guide, provide customers with a plan, call them to take action, help them avoid potential failure, and define what success looks like after using your solution. So we're taking the exact same seven things. I think the one slight change they've made is from character to customer, but the same basic premise here. The customer, they have a problem, you're the guide, you're gonna provide them with a plan, you're gonna help them take action, you're gonna help them avoid failure, and you're gonna help them define what success looks like. And the book goes through some very detailed exercises on how to fill in all this information and get really clear about exactly what it is that you do and how you serve customers. Now, 
One of the core elements here, and probably one of my favorite takeaways from the book is understanding that this is not a story about your business, this is a story about the customer. And so with that in mind, let's move to insight number two. Don't be the hero, be the guide. One of my favorite takeaways, like I said, is this idea of standing back and recognizing that the customer is really the one at the center of the story. They are the main character of the story, and your role is to be the guide. And the mistake that a lot of businesses make, and Donald explains this in the book, is that they position themselves as the hero, that it's all about them and how they can serve customers, and it's all you know trying to communicate how they are the best at doing this, and ultimately, they take this position when, when talking about their business, when explaining their story, when trying to communicate to customers that they are the hero, they're here to save the day. But at the end of the day, what customers really want is their own story. They're in this story, they've got a problem, they are looking for a plan, they're looking for a guide, they're looking for the actions or the steps that they can take to resolve the issue, they wanna avoid failure, and they want to achieve success. So your brand should look to position itself as the guide in the story. Very, very important. And two things that you need to communicate in order to really do this effectively in terms of positioning your brand as the guide are number one, to have empathy for the customer, and number two, to demonstrate authority. So when it comes to empathy, you need to be able to make it clear that you understand the frustration and the situation that your customer finds themselves in. This applies to no matter what it is that you offer. Maybe you're trying to teach them how to play piano. Maybe you're helping them paint their house. Maybe you're trying to help them clean up their garage by taking away their garbage. Maybe your garbage collection service or something like that. Regardless of what it is that you do and who it is that you do it for, you need to identify the customer's story. And a lot of this comes down to the transformation that they want to experience in their life, whatever that might be. They're trying to move from the present version of themselves, whatever that might look like, to a future version. They're trying to engage in this transformation. And so you need to identify what that is. But like I said, you need to have empathy for where they're at, understand the frustration they have. And then the second part is authority. And when it comes to authority, this is where you really need to demonstrate a deep understanding of their problem. You need to be able to articulate their problem back to them accurately in a way that resonates with them. And it always helps to have some basic testimonials or case studies to show that you have authority in this space and that you can serve their needs. But you don't wanna make yourself out to be the hero. You wanna make yourself out to be the guy that is there that understands their challenges and is in a position to help. And at the end of the day, what the customer, like I said, is looking for is transformation. They're looking for their story to shift so they can overcome this problem or this obstacle, and they're looking to you for help with that. Now, being that your role in the process is to help, one of the major obstacles or challenges that businesses have is communicating to people that they're in a position to help. You need to somehow convince or appeal to customers the fact that you can help them accomplish whatever it is that they're facing. And that takes us to insight number three, Create a one-liner for your business. As the book explains, a one-liner is a new and improved way to answer a very common question, and that is, what is it that you do? Maybe you get asked this in passing, maybe a neighbor or a friend, or maybe a client, a potential client, asks you this question, and oftentimes we give them some kind of a generic response that doesn't really provide a lot of information. So the idea here is we want a simple statement that communicates a better sense of what it is that we do and how we might be able to provide value to either the person that we're speaking with or to somebody they might know. So it's a little bit more about not just what we do, but who we do it for. So what a lot of people will do is when they're asked this question, they might say something generic, like for me, for example, in terms of what I'm creating here as far as content, I might say something like, I create video and podcast content for around business strategy, something very generic like that. Doesn't really tell you how I can help, doesn't really communicate who it's for, or if you knew somebody that might benefit from what it is that I do, you might have a tough time identifying those people and through word of mouth or something like that, helping to spread my message. So to create a better version of this, to create a really great one-liner, we're gonna use a distilled version of the story brand framework. Instead of covering all seven parts, we're gonna simplify it down to just four parts. In this case, it includes the character or the customer, the problem, the plan, and 
the success. So you could ask yourself four questions around this. Who is your customer? What is their problem? What is your plan to help them? What will their life look like after you do? So again, using me as an example, I might go through this and say, okay, the character in this case, my core audience tends to be entrepreneurs. There are certainly other people that engage with my content, but my core audience would be entrepreneurs. The problem, they're very busy and they have endless opportunities and challenges in their lives. All kinds of things going on, but it starts with the fact that they're busy and they have these opportunities and challenges. The plan in terms of how I can help would include short and focused educational content. And the success would involve helping them have clarity and renewed focus about how to move their business forward, how to take advantage of opportunities or how to overcome challenges. And so if we put all of that together, a first draft, and that's all this would be, a very first draft of how I might describe what it is that I do could be something along the lines of this. I provide busy entrepreneurs with short educational content so they can overcome challenges with clarity and renewed focus. So almost certainly some room for improvement there, a little bit long, a little bit dry sounding at the moment, but you get the idea. You're gonna take these four different things, the answers to these four areas, you put them together and you address these different aspects of your business who it is that you're serving, what the problem is, what the plan or the solution is, and ultimately what kind of success or what kind of outcome they can expect. And the reason why this is so important is it doesn't just help with customer communication. Like I hinted at earlier, it also makes it easier for people to spread the word through word of mouth because if they have a better sense of not only what you do but who you do it for, they can identify the kinds of people that they might know who might be interested in what you do. Whereas if I was to describe you know, my generic version earlier, you know, business strategy advice on YouTube or business strategy advice in podcast form, they might think, well, I don't really know who would benefit from that. Maybe somebody in the C-suite or you know, something generic like that. They might not think it's for everyday entrepreneurs and maybe they know some entrepreneurs. So it helps with customer communication, it helps with word of mouth referral. And finally, perhaps one of the most important things is it helps with internal communication. So even with your own team, if you've got a team around you, getting really clear on exactly what it is that you do and how you help people can make it easier for everybody on the team to understand the mission and have greater clarity behind the steps and the actions that they're taking on an everyday basis. Now, I should be clear, this one-liner concept is not the conclusion of the book. This isn't kind of the end goal. There's a lot more to this, and you do wanna have a firm understanding of all seven steps in the story brand framework, but this is just a simple exercise a distilled down version of what's covered in the book that gives you kind of a quick result, something that you can easily use to immediately improve your brand communication. So those are my three favorite insights from the book. There's a lot more covered in this book. We obviously didn't get a chance to do a full breakdown of the Story Brand seven part framework. So if you're interested in really exploring each of those seven areas and getting a much firmer understanding of not only what it is that you do for customers, but how you can communicate that more effectively, I recommend you check out the book. It also goes a lot deeper in terms of understanding how you're providing value for customers. So a lot of the time what we do is we scratch the surface with just the external needs of our customers, but the book goes into the internal and in some cases the philosophical needs that can really address the core of why somebody might be interested in your product or service. And the book goes into much, much more uh, detail when it comes to the importance of understanding customer transformation and what it is that customers are ultimately valuing at the end of the day. So again, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a founder, if you're a marketer, or if you're in any other position where it's important to become more effective when it comes to brand communication, then I highly recommend that you pick up a copy of this book, get familiar with the Story Brand seven part framework and look to apply it with your own business so you can become more effective in communicating with customers. That's it for this episode. If you have any questions or comments or thoughts about anything that we covered here, let me know down in the comment section below. And if you happen to be listening to the audio edition, I'll include a link as always in the show notes that will take you to the video edition so that you can participate in the comment section there as well. If you're interested in more content like this in the future, I recommend that you subscribe or follow my updates on social media so that you don't miss out on future episodes. Thank you for tuning in. I look forward to connecting with you either in the comment section of this episode or in a future 
episode.